Hi there, this is Taren Lupo. Welcome to LCL Report. This is a special edition. I've had many people ask me how I actually make something. So, I'm not a professional jeweler by any means, and there's probably people watching out there that are way better than me. But, I get something produced. So, I'm sure that uh, people beat me up in the comments that I might be doing stuff wrong. I'm not trying to teach you, I'm just showing you how I do it. Anyway, I was going to show you this. This is the jewelry bench. This is the room where the magic happens. I mean, besides the bedroom. But this is where I make all my jewelry. What we're going to start with first is this. This is actually a real solid block of silver. It's a sheet. With my customers, I try to give them a lot of silver. I mainly sell to Liberty Activists and they're nuts about silver. So this is a very thick sheet. It'll take a lot to get through this. I'm going to make my probably best-selling piece um, I'm actually getting a custom variation of that piece, but you'll see something that I've made before. Well, let me uh, okay, measure these are this. What and cut the saws this. look like when they come in a bundle? These are jeweler saws, well, saw blades. So I got to unwind these. Okay, so I'm putting the blade in the saw. You want to line up the bottom first, put the top in, and then use your chest to put pressure on against the pin and lock it. This will make it nice and tight, and you should hear like a. The hardest noise. part is just getting the cut started. So you just go gently. Okay, I got the first cut done, right? And something you want to know is where are your goggles? Now, obviously, even you know, obviously, you can do whatever you want with your own body. But you're working with lots of silver dust flakes that if they get in your eye, you're in a world of hurt. And uh, there's a reason I wear these because I was dumb enough not to Okay, before. because this is so thick um, gauge, this took me about 10 to 12 minutes to cut it right. You can get an idea of what it looks like here. But what I'm going to have to do is actually file the edges because you never cut it 100% straight. It's a little wavy on the bottom. So I have to file or sand that. Okay, files are wacky because you'll actually be pushing forward on the file away from you. Um, you actually don't cut when you pull it towards you. I don't know who the hell designed them because you have a lot more control coming backwards than forward. Uh, but that's the way they're designed. So you'll actually be brace it well, find the rugged edge, and just kind of watch it. You're trying to keep it straight and everything will get kind of the same look and kind of shiny when you're level. Okay, yeah. it's filed now, and I'm also going to bevel the edges a little. That takes a lot more time to bevel the edges so they all look kind of a little bit rounded and they don't poke people. Now, what I'm going to do before I forget is I like to put my initials on the back of this, so I'm actually going to stamp my initials on the back. To make it look more handmade, I don't necessarily worry about making them perfectly straight because if the initials are kind of off a little bit, people know it's handmade. If I just punch them in, it kind of looks more manufactured. So for my own initials, I purposely don't really make them straight. Okay, you're going to want a steel block, your piece you're working on, and then I like to use the 332nd stamps, and don't skimp on stamping. I learned that the hard way. They look like crap, so I finally got a good stamp set. Now, you're going to want to set it up so the letter is on top, and always double check when you put it down. If the silver is clean enough, you'll actually see a reflection. Okay, do not use your jeweler's hammer. Use just a regular, you know, roofing hammer or something like that. You will destroy your jeweler's hammer. You set the letter, make sure it's correct. Hold it down tight with one hand. And... Now, I like to roll it around a little and tap it, but you have to keep good pressure on it or you'll screw up the letter. This is the most nerve-wracking part because what will happen is if you screw this up, you can kind of buff it out, but it'll look like crap. So if you're really hammering, I would say this is probably the most stressful part. If you're putting a message up front, you really want to triple check things. Take your time and make a good strike. Don't get nervous and jittery with your hammer or you'll screw the piece up. There's the stamp with my initials. All right, so I've modified this design enough that uh, 
I think I like it. I'm, this is a custom order, so it's a volunteer design, but it's for a woman, so I'm making it a little more feminine, putting some curves into it, that sort of thing. Uh, so I modified this. It's on the brass now. And the first thing you want to do is cut the middle out. So you'll have to drill the middle first. I use dental drills, the drill bits. They're very, very, very tiny. Um, they're super easy to break. Oh my gosh, you break like a ton of them. Uh, if you can get away with using a larger one, do it. But like when I do real small work, like people's little porcupines on rings, it's the only thing that can even get in there and cut that. Also, you'll want to change over to your smallest jeweler saw blade. These little tiny blades are from Rio Grande. And you want to get the gold Rio. Don't skimp and get the cheap blades. I did that. It was a total nightmare. Get the gold version. And you want to use your Aught 8, probably like the smallest one for something like this. Okay, it'll give you the most control when you're going to do curves. Okay, I'm using the larger dental bit because this is a pretty big piece okay locking it down now you'll want to put it on your bench to make sure you put it in the notch so you don't drill into the wood hold it down then hit it that's it if you do it right you don't break your drill bit oh yeah some extra cutting advice don't hold your saw like this. I'm going to hold it in your fingertips so you can roll it back and forth. And when you get to the corner of a cut, you'll break your saw blade unless you just sit there and move it over and over in the same spot for a little bit while you turn. Otherwise, you just break the heck out of your saw blade. Okay, uh, I finished sawing the piece here. I'll take a look. It'll come right out. And I put a little spin on the voluntary. It's a little wavy for a female, like an hourglass. A little sexy. Now just peel off the, the paper. You can leave it on and burn it off if you want. It does kind of protect the metal. I find it's more trouble than it's worth. Okay, so it's a little uh, sharp on some of the edges. I'm going to file it down a little bit, get it prettier. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put flux on it. So go ahead and start your Back to the Future jokes now about flux capacitors and gigawatts. Okay, so now I'm laying out the brass on the silver. I made the brass extra large to stick over the tips because I'm going to tuck it around the silver. It kind of makes the, it look a little bigger. Uh, not everybody likes to do this because sometimes it'll catch. I'll grind it down so it'll, it'll fit fine. So I'll have to bend those down last when I do the soldering. Now what Flux does, it actually tells you... It kind of does two things. It keeps the, the metal from getting completely scorched. And it also tells the solder where to go to. Why it's okay, I've got the uh, solder on here. You can see it, those little pieces. And you have to carefully lift it and put it onto the piece. Okay, my uh, regular torch is busted, so I'm using this kitchen butane torch. It'll work just as good. So everything's lined up. Here we go. First thing you want to do is dry off the piece. You just kind of blast it a little bit. This dries the flux out. And then you watch it and move it up and down and up and down all over the piece. And you'll see it drop when it finally gets hot enough. Okay, it's there. Now, remember this crap is hot. So be careful. You douse it in the water. Okay, and there you go so far. There we go, right there. Okay.